first year that opened, we had almost 6,000 people come through the Decision Theater. A lot of those people came from around the world. There are a couple of cities right now that are in the process of building uh, Decision Theater-like uh, environments. We've established basically a, a network of tools, a network of assets, all linked to supercomputing capability here in Phoenix, but also now operating in multiple locations. The Decision Theater in Tempe was one location to help leaders solve complex problems through the use of great technology. That's now been expanded into Washington, D.C. at the Arizona State University Decision Theater in the McCain Institute. What we really hope to achieve through the Decision Theater is to tee up real policy options for policy makers to debate and consider, shape collective thinking across Washington as to what needs to happen, and play a role in shifting the way an issue plays out over time. One of the areas we're looking into is countering human trafficking. How can we use modern decision technology to first understand the problem, map out solutions to the problem, and then to start to solve that problem. My work in human trafficking, specifically in sex trafficking, has people's stories in it, and it has experiences of our community and our law enforcement and our policy makers. And if we don't accurately tell that story, the influence that we have to change the way things are going in our world is really diminished. A large public event, like a Super Bowl, is a magnet for human trafficking. The traffickers flock to that because they think there might be a growing market there. We looked at sex ads and online ads and we used Decision Theater to display the findings of the study. Because it is the Decision Theater, it allows not only for a person standing and talking, but it allows for uh, the visualization of data and information. You can give concrete examples on the wall that everybody can see simultaneously in order to facilitate that collective understanding. What our study found was that in 2014 in North Jersey as well as in Phoenix, Arizona, there's a consistent rate of sex ads and availability of prostitution as well as a really high number in both cities of potential minors inside of those ads that are really concerning to us as a community. We're looking at the U.S.-Mexico border and how to best solve uh, complex issues there to make it a great place both for the people in Mexico and the people in the United States. What we wanted to do working with the business school was build a model using a decision theater to show people what is going on with the U.S.-Mexico economy and to help identify policy choices. We have the ability to engage multiple user facilities, multiple user groups, multiple levels of decisions, multiple levels of problems. So if you are in the federal government and you go to a session aimed at making decisions about foreign policy, you check your electronics at the door. They're frozen out because of the ability of foreign intelligence services to use them for spying. You have smart people with great experience sitting around the table with their papers in front of them, talking and debating an issue and making decisions about it. This is the 1800s. <laughs> That's what people did then. We can do better. There are now three decision theaters in China. We're having conversations with some folks in India right now. We've had an ongoing set of uh, conversations with uh, folks at, in uh, United Arab Emirates, UAE. We're optimistic that there is a lot of demand uh, among stakeholders for having a space where they can gauge the cross-section between an idea community and an implementation community. It is in the best interest of our community that is working on human trafficking to use mechanisms like decision theater. The objective is over time that we'll build up this comprehensive global network of decision theaters where we can share project information, share technical information, and expand the vision for the decision theater.